let's get started. And oh, the other thing I mentioned, which I probably said while the mic was muted, is that we are working up towards another test for this unit. And I haven't put a set timeline on that yet. I'm thinking Friday, but at one, at, sorry, at six o'clock that last time, I don't know whether that time works well for most people. I'm trying to make sure that people who are working have a time that is convenient. And there were some exceptions that I made for people who had to you know, do the test a little early on that particular day when we had the test last time. So I can do that for people for uh, on an exceptional basis. So if most of us can do this at, at six o'clock, it would probably be at six o'clock. And as I said, Friday seems like the, 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 the likely candidate at this point. Okay. Let me know if there's, if there are any issues with that. Okay. So let's get started. We're looking at applications of trig functions. So we're going to, by the end of the class, be able to apply our knowledge of trig derivatives to word problems. Let me start with this one. So hopefully everybody can read that. A tool shed, hold on one second, let me get this out of the way. A tool shed um, is 250 centimeters high, 100 centimeters deep, and it's being built against a wall. And we're, need to, we're gonna to try to calculate the shortest ladder that can reach the ground over the shed to the wall behind. So let's try to put a picture on this. You've done a lot of questions with ladders against the wall before, but this one is quite different. So here's what I'm going to represent this situation with. This is the ladder, this is the wall that it's leaning up against, but then we have the shed, which was just mentioned, and that shed has to be inside here. So think of this thing that I'm pointing to, this blue rectangle as the shed. And that shed has certain dimensions, which I'll put on now. It's a 250 centimeter high shed and 100 centimeters along the ground. That's what it means by deep. And this ladder needs to go over that shed and reach the wall. And what we're asking is, what's the shortest ladder that can do that? and reach the wall from the ground, but has to go over this shed. And the shed has these dimensions. So if that is the case, what I'm gonna do first of all is just fill out this diagram a little bit more. I'm gonna put that 100 centimeter from the bottom along the top as well, because it's a rectangle. So that must mean that the two dimensions must be the same on both sides. So this 100 centimeter here should be the same as this one here. And this 250 centimeter here should be the same as this over here. So that's a good starting point. So we have a ladder, we have a shed, we have some dimensions. Here's the other thing I want to do. We're trying to get the shortest ladder. So I'm gonna break up this ladder into two parts. I'm gonna call into two, well, essentially two triangles. This triangle up here, which has a part of the ladder at A, and this triangle down here, which is a part of the ladder at D. So let's just, first of all, accept that these two together give us the length of this ladder. And I've also added in two angles. I put an angle here of theta in both of these two places. And that angle, if you think about it, the, the size of that angle is going to determine the length of this ladder along the side here, right? Because if I made this angle maybe steeper, that would lengthen the ladder. If I made the angle shorter. So this, this angle here is going to be a critical determinant of how long this ladder is going to be. Okay. So let's let the length of the ladder be equal to the sum of these two things, the A plus the B. That hopefully makes sense. And I'm going to now come up with a formula for the A, this, this right here. This A, if I use Sokotor, would be involved with the cosine of this angle being the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And that's exactly what I have here, the cosine of this angle. And by the way, just so you know, these two angles are equal because this, these two things are what we call similar triangles. They have this line and this line are both parallel. So because this line is actually what we call a transversal for these two parallel lines. That means that this angle here, this angle here are actually equal angles. So the cosine of this angle would be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That's what this says. And I could therefore rewrite that so that the A is equal to 100 over the cosine of, of the angle. 
all right? I could do the same thing with the other side over here, the B. But this time I'm going to use sine because this is the opposite side. So it means that the theta here is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so 250 over B, which is what this says. Then I can rearrange this so that B is equal to 250 over the sine of theta. So now we can add these two things together, right? This L, this length of this ladder is the A plus the B. The A we said was this, the B we said was that. So if I add these two things together, the 100 over the cosine of theta and the 250 over the sine of theta, that should be equal to the length of this line. So now I have an equation which relates the angle theta with the length of the line. As this angle changes, the length of this line will change. And what I'm seeking to do now is to figure out what is the shortest ladder, the shortest L that I can get as I change this angle. So I'm hoping everybody will understand that that's going to involve having a derivative. The other thing I've just done is I've just simply written this as instead of 100 over cosine of theta, 100 co times, times the cosine of theta to the minus one. Because we're going to derive it, I thought it would be easier if we set this up as rather than a quotient, but as a product. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. So I set up as a product for both of these. And I'm going to go ahead now and do my derivative. So my next line is going to be the derivative. Here's my derivative. I'm going to take, as you know, the minus 1 times 100, which gives us that, and then the cosine of theta to the minus 2. So that's the first part of the derivative. Then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which would be the minus sine of theta. Of course, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so that's what this is all about here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Multiply minus 1 times 250, which is that. Then it's sine to the minus 2. And then I'm going to multiply by the inner function, which would be cosine. So this represents my derivative of the original relationship between the length of the ladder and the angle that you have here. That the angle, that's the angle that the ladder makes of the ground. So that's what this is. That's my derivative. So now I'm faced with having to take this derivative and set it equal to zero. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it a little bit so that instead of saying cosine of theta to the minus two, I'm going to put that as cos squared theta as my derivative, as my, sorry, my denominator. And then this, of course, is going to be minus, if you think about it, this here is minus 250 cosine over the sine squared theta, same thing here. So I'm putting these two things as a difference with a denominator of cos squared minus sine squared. Now, that's the thing that I'm going to set equal to zero so I can find my max or min. In this case, I'm looking for a minimum. So I'm going to take this and set them equal to each other because this is equal to zero, so therefore I can set them equal to each other. So what do I do now? How do I solve this? Well, I'm going to suggest that we cross multiply. I'm going to take this denominator multiplied by this side, that denominator multiplied by that side. So that's going to give me a cubic term. So 100 sine cubed theta is equal to 250 cos cubed theta. Okay, what am I supposed to do with that now? How am I going to be able to solve for theta? I'm looking for some ideas here. I don't want silence. I need somebody to help me out here. Lucas, give me an idea. We did something similar to this on our last class when we we're solving these trig derivatives. Give me an idea of what I can do to solve for theta here. Any ideas at all? Let me unmute you here. Okay, sir. So can you divide both sides by 250 cos, theta, cos squared, cos cubed theta, and then you'll get uh, tan cubed? Okay. That was a Lucas, but that was a great idea. All right. So he's right. Let's Wait, divide. Sir, Lucas's mic doesn't work. Oh, he does. Okay. That's yeah. all right. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100 cosine cubed theta, both sides, right? We did something like this when we were solving a question recently. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, I think we understand that when you divide sine by cos, you're going to get tan. So that's where this is going. Of course, 100 divided by 100 is just going to be 1. 
So this should be tan, but this is going to give me whatever 250 divided by 100 is. So there's my next line. It's the tan cubed of theta that's equal to 2.5. That's 250 divided by 100 is 2.5, by the way. So I've now made it into a form or a fashion that I can now solve. So what would my next step be? All right, let me hear from anybody. All right, I need to solve for theta. The tan cubed of theta is equal to 2.5. What do you say, Sophia? Please don't tell me your mic isn't working either. Sophia, talk to us. What do you think? Um, could you just cube root the 2.5? Of course. So that's the next step. We cube root the 2.5, right? And then we have to find the angle that gives us that. So the tan minus one of this is essentially where we're going with this. So. Here's my answer, approximately 1.19 radians. Now, this calculation is something that I would recommend that you do in radians. So, of course, you could do it in degrees as well, but this is what I'm gonna to recommend to you. But that's not my answer, because the question didn't ask me, or does it, no, the question didn't ask me for what is the angle that will maximize this. The question is asking me for the shortest ladder. So, how do I move from this to getting that answer. All right, Oyen, your time. I have a list of people here so I can tell you who is in the room with me, so help me out, Oyen. What can I do now to figure out my actual final answer? What do I do with my 1.19 radians? Because I need to know the length of the ladder. Is there some way that I can use this answer here to get that? Are you there? The 1.19 radians, that's just an angle. But what I'm, the question, if you look back at the question, it says calculate the shortest ladder that can reach the ground. So we haven't answered that question yet. So what do you think? Oh, you sent a message. Oh. Okay, and what's the message? I see. I don't have the chat thing there. I am recording the chats as well. I'll try to publish that later on. And what is Oyen saying? She said that you have to put it back in the original equation. So let's do that. Thank you very much. So I'll do that, and I'm getting approximately 538.5. Hopefully, you're getting the same thing as well. So this represents what the shortest ladder is. Shortest ladder is a boat, and you, and you see, I'm saying a boat here because this is really approximate is about 538.5 meters. So that's your answer, right? There's quite a few steps involved there. And let me just go over those steps because the next question is actually your question. I'm not gonna do that question for you. I'll show you the answer after I've given you a chance to try it. But the next question is actually yours. So let me just go over this very quickly. Next question is gonna be similar. I broke this up into two parts, an A and a B, to represent the full length of the ladder. I came up with an equation to represent A. I came up with an equation to represent B. I added those two things together. I took that sum and I derived it, set that derivative equal to zero over here. And then I solved, by, well, well, there was a step where I had to divide both sides by cosine, which would give me tan in one case and would eliminate one side to one or some other number. In this case, it worked out to be 2.5. And then I went ahead and solved for the angle and then using that angle, as Oyen said, to put it back into the original equation to see what the length of that ladder is. So there is a practical problem that was solved using calculus. I want to know how the shortest ladder is that I can use for this to happen. And by setting this up, I was able to figure that out. Now, this next question is yours. I'm not, I'm not, sure, I'm not going to pause the video. I'm just going to show the question and then I'm going to turn it over to you and ask you to try this on your own. So this says the corridor is three meters wide. So this think of itself as being at school and there's a three meter corridor. Then there's a bend in the, in the, in the path, you know, as you're going along, you have to turn a corner and somebody has this rod that needs to be carried horizontally around this corner. And they want to know what's the longest rod that can do that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that rod into the room for you. So this is the rod that they're trying to sort of move along here. And of course, as you know, you can, 
just admit Ashley here, you can actually, you know, angle this various ways that will affect the length of this line. So what I'm asking you to do, I'm going to wait about five minutes or so. Hopefully you took some notes on what we just did. I can put that other question back on the screen for you in a, in a second. But I want you right now, right, as if we're in class, to take this information and give me an answer. No, notice what I said here. Give your answer. There's a reason why this answer can be in exact form. Give me your answer in exact form. Go. I'd like you to look at this question as well, right? Another sort of practical everyday problem that can be solved using calculus. And if we have time at the end, I'll come back and we'll discuss the answer to that one again. All right, but well, let's talk about this one. Irrigation, and I think this one came from the textbook, by the way. Irrigation channel is constructed by bending a sheet of metal that's three meters wide as shown in the diagram. And what's happening is that they're bending it at the middle. And so there is one piece which is up here, which is the same length as the other piece which is up here. So in other words, they're taking that three meter piece of sheet metal and they're bending it into thirds. So one third is along here, one third is along the bottom and one third is along the other side. And this represents the cross section of this irrigation channel. And they're asking us what angle will maximize that cross section that we're looking at, the capacity of this cross section. So, I'm thinking that we're trying to find the area of this, what we call a trapezoid, right? Think back to grade nine for a little bit. So I'm gonna put a line on that to complete the trapezoid. So that line represents the bottom or the top, I guess you could say the top of this trapezoid. And I'm trying to find what the maximum area is of this trapezoid given that this is one meter, that's one meter, and that's one meter. The angle here on each side will clearly determine what this area is. So if I were to make this angle really, really small, that's gonna flatten this thing out. If I make this angle really, really big, it's gonna make it bigger, but there might be a sweet spot somewhere that's gonna make this the maximum capacity possible. And that's what we're gonna try and find using calculus. So. First thing is, let me put some dimensions on here. I'm putting some lines on here that should help us to sort of break this trapezoid down into rectangles and triangles, right? So I put these lines in. Now, each of these lines, we don't know what the length of this line is yet. It's just a line. We know one meter is along the bottom. One meter is what is essentially the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I'm just putting those lines in for now. I'm gonna call this length here X. I'm gonna call this length here y. So bearing in mind that that's the variable that I've assigned to both of these, I'm gonna put three subscripts here for area. Area one, area two, area three. If I can find the area of area one and area two and area three and add them together, that should represent the total area of this trapezoid. And that of course is made up of these two triangles and this rectangle. So area two is the, tra is the rectangle, areas one and three are two triangles. Now, let's see if we can come up with some trigonometric functions that will relate the x, the y, and these dimensions that we have. Here's the first one. The sine of this angle right here is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so x over one which means that the sine of that angle is just simply equal to x, as x of one is just x. The cosine of this angle would be the adjacent over the same hypotenuse. So it's the same y over one, which is just y. Now, the A3, which is this triangle right here, right? And by the way, this triangle right here is gonna be the same as this one over here. Let's just accept that. This whole rectangle has a diagonal, which means that these two triangles are actually identical. This top line here is also Y. This side line here is also X. So if I know the, the, the area of this triangle here, it's the same as this area A3. So what I'm gonna say this area here is, is X times Y, right? Because that's how you find the area of a triangle divided by two. So it's the X times Y, which is the sine of theta. We said that's what X was, times the cosine of theta, that's what Y is divided by two. That would be the area of this triangle. And that's just using a simple formula for the area of a triangle. So that's A3. 
let's agree that A1 and A3 are the same. So this triangle here and this triangle here, it's a trapezoid. It's supposed to be symmetrical. Running out of time, oh dear. Where are we at now? Two, okay, it's about 10 minutes. Um, okay, so this triangle here, A1 and A3 are both the same. So if this sine x or sine theta times cosine theta divided by two is what A3 is, I just need to multiply that by two to get the two of them together. A1 plus A3 must just be the sine of theta plus the cosine of theta right there, right? Because I'm multiplying A3 by two. So that means I'm just gonna end up with sine theta times cos theta. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is what A1 plus A3 is. Let's get to A2. Now A2, right, is gonna be this side times this side. Now, we already agreed what this side is, right? This side here is the sine of theta, okay? Which is the same as x over here. So that must mean that the area two is equal to one, which is this side, multiplied by this side, which we already agreed is the sine of theta. Remember, it's the same as x. This x here is the same as this side here. So if I'm multiplying this by this, I should have the area of this A2 right here. So I'm gonna add everything up together now. I'm gonna say that the total area of this trapezoid is equal to the sine of theta times the cos of theta, which is A1 plus A3, plus the sine of theta, which is A2. All these together, added together, should be my area. So let's continue. I'm just gonna factor out that sine theta and I'm gonna get the cos theta plus one. I'm going to use my derivative now, which should be, and we, we all know to do derivatives here. So sine of theta times the cos theta, I'm gonna use a product law. I'm gonna get cos times cos theta plus one plus minus sine theta times sine theta. Again, you can always slow this down when I post a video later on to make sure you can verify that calculation. So I'm gonna have cos squared theta plus cos theta minus sine squared theta right there. Well, here comes the sort of magic now. I'm gonna use one of those Pythagorean identities. I'm gonna replace, I have cos theta and I have cos theta, but then I have this sine squared theta. Why don't I just replace that with one minus cos squared theta? Because that's really what sine squared theta is. So if I do that, I'll have everything in terms of cos. So I have cos squared plus cos minus one plus cos. I'm not sure why I have a bracket there. Anyway, let's simplify that to give me this, right? I just added my like terms together and then I have to factor this. So if I were to factor that, let me minimize this here. If I were to factor that, I'm gonna end up with this, two cos theta minus one and cos theta plus one. So I need to set each of these equal to zero, which I just did. I'm gonna set this one equal to zero and solve it, which means that cos theta is equal to a half. And of course, that means that the angle is cos, the inverse of cos of uh, half, which is pi over three. Here's my angle. That's the angle that's gonna work. Now we should also take the cos theta plus one and set that equal to zero. If I did that, then I'd have the cos of theta is equal to minus one. Unfortunately, when I take the cos minus one of minus one, I get pi, and that answer is not possible. You could not have this angle here being pi. Pi, of course, is what we call 180 degrees. If that would bring it all the way over here, that would bring this all the way over here, that makes no sense. So that answer is inadmissible. But we can therefore now conclude that the angle that's gonna make, maximize this capacity is actually equal to pi over three. And that's really what I wanted to go over with you. Now, let me go on and just show you very quickly one of your homework or the homework question. We have one question for homework. Those are the two questions that I wanted to do with you. Your homework question looks like this. And I'm hoping that everybody is going to be able to do this question without me actually, whoa, didn't mean to do that. Let me go back here. Sorry. Is it going to be able to do this question without me helping you out? Position of a particle is given by this function and I'm asking what is the maximum value for displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So you're going to obviously have to figure out some derivatives for that. And I think I am, I am fairly confident that you can do that without my help. It's the kind of question you could see on a test. I'm gonna leave that with you. It is your homework. I'm gonna leave that with you and ask you to, you know, if you have any questions, obviously we can do that in our next session. But I'm going to go back now, right? I'm going to go back to the question I had before. I don't want you to see the answer. 
I want to see if anybody gets the answer. All right, let me do this quickly. Okay, there we go. So, hopefully you didn't see my answer before. Did anybody come up with anything that they think would represent the answer for this question? Um, I got 0.79. Hmm. Okay. That answer, hmm. is, that, is that the angle or is that the length of the line? Uh, it's the angle. Oh, oh the angle. Okay. <laughs> I know that's what the question, <laughs> that was what the question actually said, find the longest line. So you have one more step oh, left yeah. to get that answer. And it, here's the thing though, I did say an exact form. So what would have been good is if you had left the angle um, in exact form to get the final answer. So you're probably on the right track. Anybody else have another answer that they think would be exact form for this? I got uh, length equals to 12 square root two divided by two. So that sounds like six root two to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Well done. Well done. Um, so here's my answer. Six root two is, is exactly what you just said, except um, you forgot to just do a little bit more work to just reduce yeah. it down to its final answer. That's good. Good stuff. So here's my little statement here. With so, yeah, I agree with that answer, by the way. And well done. So before our time mm -hmm. runs out and they actually kick us out of the room, I, you know, I'm kind of missing Zoom a little bit. I probably wasn't supposed to use Zoom with you. Please don't tell anybody I did this. I will probably have to go back to Google Meet, but I just figured I'd just use Zoom today. All right, hopefully nobody objects to that. If there are no more questions, I'm going to leave it on that note. And uh, we'll talk again on Wednesday. Like I said, it's likely that we're going to put a test together for Friday. Friday at probably 6 o'clock. But for now, we're just going to ask you to get together with me again on Wednesday. And any formal announcement about a test date will probably be by announcement at some point when I figure out exactly what works for everybody. Okay? For the people in the room, is anybody objecting to a Friday 6 o'clock like the last time? Anybody who thinks that doesn't work for them? Um, I am not able to do it at 6 because okay. I finish work exactly at 6. Okay. Can you do it earlier in the day? Um, sure. Okay. Communicate with me later on and let me know a, a, a time that works for you because I can allow you to do it earlier, but on the same day. I'd love everybody to do it on the same day, okay? No That's problem. Yeah. Last time. All right, folks. Y'all have a good time. Stay safe, you know, the usual, and we'll talk again on Wednesday. All right? Yeah. Mr. Kevin. Right. Yeah, go ahead. A uh, quick question before sure. you go. Uh, is this our last lesson before the test? It would be. So I'd probably do some review with you on Wednesday. That's what, what I'm thinking at this point. And of course, any homework questions, anything you wanted to ask about, that would be a good time to do it. Okay, and the test will resemble our homework questions? About I would think so, yes. Yes. And, and as I said, and to be honest with you, the stuff we did today is kind of like, more problem set type questions. I think it's important for you to know how to do it because I mean, it's all about learning here. I may not ask you something as involved as that on the test, but I think it was, it, it's good for you to know what we did and how it can be done. Reasonable? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right, thank um, you all. We, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, are we able to see your quiz mark now? Yeah, it's been on there since Saturday, I think it was, yes. I got okay. the last person to get it done on Saturday, so it's there now. Okay, okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Take care, folks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.